come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast, uh, sometimes called a movie book club. Book club for movies that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And that'll help us achieve our goal of becoming the fastest growing internet radio podcast of all time in the universe, in the galaxy. Do you want to dominate the world? I can't. Oh. But we can. So help us. Yeah. Like and subscribe. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Who are these people who are talking to you? I'll tell you. They're the internet radio (laughs) superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Colin's got jokes tonight. Yeah. (laughs) He hit us one right before the recording. Yeah, he got uh, his anger in right before we started recording. It just stifled our laughter. Let's not give him a big head, because he'll try. I know. And then this will go downhill. And he'll be like the Chuck Norris He's like, I was going to say, you ever heard of Chuck Norris? Yeah. (laughs) I had those written out. You got to go back and listen to our, what, two, three uh, Chuck Norris episodes. You Invade. You drug those Chuck Norris jokes on for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> what? True. Sidekicks, Invasion USA, and Delta, Delta, Delta Force. Force. Yes. You did it so much that even when you weren't doing it, you scared us. Yeah. I remember you said something close to him. I'm just like, wait, uh, were you going to do a Chuck Norris joke? <laughs> um, had us on edge for weeks. <laughs> I'm glad I could have that effect on people. Um, what triggering? <laughs> so, the, um, well, I'll tell you what. So, we, this is actually our uh, second of uh, four weeks that we're watching movies that were chosen by you guys. Uh, we uh, put a poll up in December for Listener Choice Month. Uh, which is this month, and uh, we got a bunch of submissions, and then you guys voted on them, and these are the four movies that uh, got the most votes. And so last week we did Phantasm 2, mm-hmm. and this week, what do we do? Prince of Darkness. Directed by? The master, John Carpenter. <laughs> there you Indeed. go. Mm-hmm. Because From you the, guys yeah. just, and fr- oh yeah, uh, 1987. Okay. Because yep. you guys just love John Carpenter. <laughs> We've you, done a lot. Yeah. Mm. Um, and by you guys, you mean all the listeners and all of us. That's yeah. right. I mean, I'm not going to got John no complaints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. At one point, John Carpenter was like my favorite director of all time. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, as his filmography kept growing and growing and you know, it started <laughs> downrating. I mean, I think that happens to everybody. You Every know? director, yeah. literally all of them. This yeah. is why Tarantino is just like, I'm making 10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're all going to be pretty great. And then we're all going to get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your mileage may vary. Yeah. It is kind of frustrating when, like, all these guys from, like, this period of time, um, I'm trying to think, is anybody, well, Cronenberg, well, he got out of horror. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Wes Craven, he had a revitalization. He got out of horror, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Wes Craven. Jesus, yeah. That's not the that first. That puts some respect on I mean, I think. I know, it's like, <laughs> speak ill of Wes Craven. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. the first time, and I'm obviously joking. Yeah, but <laughs> well, no, but Wes Craven was probably the most successful, I suppose, of that group that included like Stuart Gordon, Toby Hooper, mm, um, yeah. George Romero. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Wes Craven continued to have like big successes, and then you have his, you know, my soul to takes and, three separate decades of horror iconography. Yeah, indeed, it's pretty mm-hmm. impressive. And Carpenter, unfortunately, has basically retired and become a musician at this point in his career. Yes. Unfortunately, probably. I don't know, is it? Probably, yeah. a better, probably a better idea. I mean, yeah. good for him. I know? think so. Like, okay, but if they announced that he was directing a movie this year, we would all shit our pants, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't think I would because I never saw the word, and I'm not like, oh, John Carpenter is coming back. I'm like, I don't think he should. Yeah. Like, if, you get to a certain point, it's like, been it's, dumb. it's been what twelve years since the word came out. Like, I still haven't yeah. seen that either. Yeah, I'd still be excited, especially if it was a horror movie. I'd be like, oh shit, Let's I'd do be it. nervous. Yeah, and that's you know? the thing too. It's like yeah. John Carpenter doesn't seem to get like the um, you know, I think the, like the last time he got like a big like studio movie was probably like Escape from L.A. So most mm-hmm. of the stuff he gets is like independently financed, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But I'm surprised that Blumhouse hasn't gone. Well, they, I guess they did. They're in business. Well, yeah, with yeah. And yeah. They're, doing it, and yeah. they're doing the one thing he wants to do. Yeah. They, that's how he likes to make money is just the royalty check. He, yeah. he doesn't have to do anything. So yeah. I don't Which blame him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. these new Halloween's will be played for years. Mm-hmm. They don't have to pay me so much. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when John Carpenter was like in his prime, and I guess I, I this is a little past his prime, maybe uh, Prince of Darkness. Probably. But it still seems like, you know, he's still creating, like, these are movies that we look back on and are kind of, you know, like, uh, unusual, you know. 
Uh, I don't know. Well, I was going to say you haven't seen anything like this, but that's not true. You have. Okay. Have so, we? So we got to go back because in there's a clue at the very beginning of this movie. The writer credit on Prince of Darkness is uh, Martin Quatermass. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So are you familiar with the Quatermass movies? I was here for the Quatermass movie. I was you not. Were. Yeah. So I know I'm them. Not. Yes. Quatermass okay. in the pit. I was That's here right. for that. Yeah. And, and okay. So, yeah. so this is uh, Bernard Quatermass is a character in a, Bernard. I love Bernard. Yeah. It's an English uh, series. I think there's four Quatermass stories: Quatermass in the Pit, uh, mm -hmm. Quatermass Two, and Quatermass. Oh, sorry. Quatermass Experiment. Yeah. Quatermass Two. Mm. Quatermass in the Pit. We watched Quatermass, Quatermass in the Pit. Yeah. So. Quatermass is a character that's created by a guy named Nigel Neal. Uh, he's a writer of, uh, I don't know if he did novels, but he did like movies uh, and, and screenplays and TV stuff uh, that Stone Tape um, was. And the Quatermass movie uh, stories and the Stone Tape, and most of what Nigel Neal does is he takes supernatural phenomenon and tries to explain it through a scientific lens, right? Mm -hmm. So he's deconstructing the supernatural, as we saw in uh, Quatermass in the Pit, and basically like it's trying to explain this phenomena as like science fiction. Mm -hmm. and, like tachyons and shit. Yes. So John Carpenter, huge fan of the Quatermass. I mean, like obviously, it's obvious yeah. when you watch this movie because not only do they go to Neil uh, College, you know, he's got right. the, <laughs> the college uh, shirts. Um, but he had actually worked with Nigel Neal. Uh, I think if you go back and listen to our Halloween 3 episode, we may have talked about this if we were aware of it at the time. But he actually did contract Nigel Neal to write Halloween 3. Because Halloween 3, if you think about that, it's you know taking the idea of Celtic uh, you know, right. um, magic and then kind of explaining it through scientific phenomena. But apparently... Neil hated what Carpenter eventually did with the movie. Like, he distances himself from it. He's like, it okay. sucked. <laughs> Didn't like the experience or anything. Don't work with your heroes. Yeah, apparently not. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, Carpenter is still like a big enough fan that he, you know, writes this under a pseudonym, uh, you know, Quatermass, and uh, it seems like a Quatermass type story, mm -hmm. except it lacks, I think, that, you know, that, propulsion. Well, who's the, uh, who's the, Quater, the, the Quatermass character in this? The mustache. <laughs> Is it? But, <laughs> it's not. I was going to say it's probably Professor Barak. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then also, I think uh, this also completes a quadrology of movies that we have been watching. Yes. From Alive Films. We discussed. What did we discuss? Shocker this on? was the last one. I think Shocker. Yes. Because we discussed how um, uh, Alive Films gave Carpenter the deal for four movies, I believe. Carpenter made two. Um, this one, and what was the other one? They Live. They Live, which was right after this. Yep. Um, and then he walked away from the contract, and they gave that funding to Wes Craven, who popped out Shocker, and... The People Under the Stairs. Jesus! Ooh, this is not a good betting average for yeah. live films. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think what the... the a live films... So it was, uh, you know, we talked about this in the previous episode, so sorry if you already listened to those, but uh, Shep Gordon, the music manager, and also Chef Extraordinaire, whatever he runs restaurants or something mm. um he like the the you know because they were a live music and he was a label or whatever a production company and so before blumhouse he basically recruited these horror filmmakers and give them li limited budgets so i think they were like three million a piece for these movies so it's like you got to work within the constraints of three million but you can do whatever the hell you want right. nobody's gonna fuck with you you get total creative freedom and so that was how Carpenter and Craven were working under those in these four movies. And look what happened. Yeah, these are <laughs> undiluted, right? This undiluted. is straight. Uh, Pure, here are the minds of those two. Yep. But I guess limited. hampered by the limitations of the budget. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's fine. There's just, we don't get the devil. We get a devil hand. Okay, mm -hmm. so I guess. Uh, There's one location in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have a church. Mm -hmm. they have a and they have a basement. And they have the basement. street outside the church where you can see Donald Pleasance walk up to it like seven times in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, in the sure. college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the college courtyard. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how you keep your budget small. You keep yeah. everybody, all the action uh, contained. Um, okay. So 
I remember the primary criticism of this movie in 1987 was, and we have uh, two people here <laughs> Nothing who haven't seen it before. No, it was, uh, if you're going to call your movie Prince of Darkness, there's an expectation. <laughs> that I'm going to see the fucking Prince of Darkness? Yeah. The, yep. Yep. That's yeah. the one. Okay. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you call it that? I mean, there's a lot of talk about the devil specifically in this movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk. A lot of talk. A lot of talk, lot yeah. Of talk. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of seeing. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I feel like this is a more apt title for that episode of the Twilight Zone where they trap the devil in the in the jail cell. Is it the Howling Man? Yeah, I think it so. It might be. Is it? I don't, uh, I don't know. The, yeah, cool. the episode yeah. where they have the devil trapped in the jail yeah. cell and he convinces people to let him out. That's a Prince of Darkness episode right there. You actually get to see the devil and you get to see him transform. Like, uh, It's a really cool way they do the transformation in that. Yeah. Is this a so, new one or an old one? It's an old, old one. one. Ooh, all right, it's like it's the, the devil gets out of the cell and as he's walking down this hallway, there's pillars. And after every pillar, it cuts to him being mm. a little bit more transformed. Yeah. Until oh, wow. He's, full. he's like great. a beggar or something. Yeah. He's in yeah. the cell yeah. trying like to it. convince this guy to let him yeah. out. Cool. It's a good Twilight Zone episode. But that's the that's Prince of Darkness. That's the Prince of Darkness story. It's such a cool title, but yeah, it puts your expectations really high. Yeah, and so maybe I mean you know maybe it should have had a different title um, because I think Liquid so. Devil. Did they just call it that because Alice Cooper's in this? Uh, <laughs> no, his song Prince of Darkness is because he was in. This. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, Alice Cooper's in this. Alice Cooper doesn't say a word. Uh, Alice Cooper's in most of these movies. It feels like right, or he was in Shocker yeah. in this. Yeah. Pops and up. maybe that was it. Maybe he wasn't in uh, Wayne's uh, World. <laughs> uh, they lived. Yeah. Well, he wasn't in they lived. No, I mean, but yeah, the, 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 the alive film. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. 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 Shep Gordon was Alice Cooper's manager. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So I guess you know, it's like yeah, maybe the title's bad, but I think I get like he's trying to do that thing where we're going to take this, you know. Um, supernatural entity he's and then deconstructing subvert. it through cinema. Yeah. <laughs> like they're doing in the movie. That's We're gonna, what he wants to do anyway. Yeah. So it's not going to be a big red guy in a, you yeah, know. Yeah, you think you're going to get legend. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Or, no. But you don't. it could have even been a Devil's Reign direction. But yeah. it's not even that. Like, that's something. I know. They get rid of all the iconography that you really associate. The goat horns, goat mm -hmm. hooves, you know, like yeah. there's right. nothing there. Because the only thing that we get, we get the hand through the mirror. I thought it was going to be a hoof. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. But then that yeah. would be a shot from Legends. Yes, so it was. Be. Wait, what was that movie we just watched with the hoofed person? Was that Night Train to Terror? Yeah. Sir, Wait, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do yeah. 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 remember the guy took yeah. his shoes off and he had hoofed feet? Yeah. <laughs> what a weird one. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one is basically, if if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, it's basically a two-part movie. It's a, There's a, like a, a clear point where it becomes, a, there's like one half, and then at this moment, then it becomes... The whatever. So what is the first half of this movie? Oh, actiony, actiony. Action well, right. that's what he's going for. Okay, okay. Well, that's what he's going for. Yeah, whether what or did not we achieve? <laughs> yeah, actiony. All right. So the, the first half is a mystery. Let's walk and whisper in hallways. Yes, mm -hmm. because forty that, minutes. That mm -hmm. seems like if we talk, you know, and whisper, or even tones. not talk. There's a lot of just walking around hallways, and not yeah, talking. There's a lot of yeah. shots of them talking from a distance, and we can't hear anything. Mm -hmm. Which is yep. an odd choice. And then the score is just throbbing at you. Yeah. Boom, boom. yeah. <laughs> Constantly. I was listening this time. I If heartbeat. there was more than like two minutes of this movie that didn't have score, <laughs> this might be the most overscored movie I have ever yeah. seen. <laughs> it's a, because like it doesn't build tension when it's under every scene. It's just like a heartbeat <laughs> kind of. Yeah. We're talking about the devil. It's tense yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is through the entire movie. The I mean, entire movie. Is. Just yeah. like pulsing and throbbing. It yeah. is. But it's to, like... It's, but to be fair, there's not a lot of tension throughout most of those movies. That's so. not yeah. true. But it feels like kind of like a... It's almost like a heartbeat of the movie. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the devil. It's yeah. coming back to life. A lot of John Carpenter music. The devil's in the music, Colin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John Carpenter and Alan Howard. How, how did... Yeah, why doesn't this movie end with an Alice Cooper original song for the movie coming over the credits? Why? He wrote it. Yeah, so come on, yeah. spice it, plays, it up a little bit. It plays when a character is uh, killed by Alice Cooper. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. character is listening to the song on his headphones. Which not we, good enough. It's not good enough. I was and, wondering because I'm like, I see it in the credits. I'm like, well, where was this song? Yeah, yeah you don't really hear it. Yeah, it should have been played over the end credits. <laughs> yeah. um, this movie's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> the scene where Alice Cooper, Alice Cooper plays what was the Psycho Schizo or something like that? It was the, his credit oh. at the end of the. Um, uh. he's a homeless person, um, 
all the homeless people around this are like controlled by the uh, the force. I don't know. Should we call it the devil, the prince of darkness, mm-hmm. the evil thing uh, that the movie centers around? The green sludge. And he uh, confronts a character in a dark alley uh, with a half of a bicycle and impales him with it. And this is a this that's from Alice Cooper's act. Like that's what no. Alice Cooper does <laughs> as a part of his stage show. Mm-hmm. I think Tom Savini might have engineered that uh, effect for Alice Cooper for a touring. Cool. What? That's cool. What's the concept? Like, why does he do that? He always kills like characters. Yeah, on stage he kills and a stuff. nurse. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who yes. he kills with the. Um, the that would have been. And yeah, whoever the pop early. star of the day is, he usually yeah. like puts in an electric chair or something. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Alice Cooper. If you haven't seen an Alice Cooper show, go see live show. Yeah, yeah. That is something. It's a else. production. Yeah, yeah. while well, we yes. still have him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, Colin, don't jinx don't it. Don't jinx it. Well, come on. How old is the? He's got to be like seventy You're years not old. By now. You are not helping anything right now, Colin. All right. God bless Alice Cooper. Um. Okay. So, um, the first half of this movie, a mystery. It sets up. A mystery with the longest opening credit sequence possibly in motion picture history. I think it's maybe like 15 minutes of opening credits. It's worse than that Friday the 13th remake. Oh, that (laughs) That one's very long. Because they do an entire movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is just before title title sequence. Yeah, it's like 15, 20 minutes into it. This one does a few long title sequences, don't they? Who? Friday the 13th. But that remake, they do a whole movie. Is it a whole? Well, there's yeah. like, oh, there is the whole, there, well, there's the whole the title, yeah, yeah. But or the title. But do they show like the do they do they show the credits throughout the no. movie? No, see that's the thing because there's a lot of movies nowadays that they go like yeah. 20, like Marvel does it a lot, like 20 minutes into it, and they show you what movie you're watching. Yeah. They do it. The Friday the Thirteenth remake does it because then it's going to be a whole new movie after that title right. card. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a like completely different movie. Yeah, as a cop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so the so what is just, our mystery? What are they? Well, a priest, an old priest dies. The old priest uh, has in his possession a key. The key, where does the key go to? Donald Pleasant shows up, and he's another he's priest. The, he's the young priest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The old priest and a young priest. The young Padawan. The young yeah. And he has to figure out, what does this key unlock? And so he eventually finds out that this, that the Catholic Church, or a subsect of the Catholic Church, yes. sworn to secrecy, and known as the Brotherhood of Sleep, yes. because they all share the same dream, have imprisoned? They're guarding. Guarding, I would guarding. say. Because I don't think they did it. I bet. Who no, because later the Somebody carbon dating says this thing is 7 million years old. Yes. Right. So. They this, just discovered it and hid it. Right. Discovered it and knew what it was. Because of the book. Because of, of the book, which has been rewritten over the years to try and hide the secrets of this thing. Probably by followers of the Green Sludge, to so you don't know what it is. I'm guessing, maybe. Feels that, like I mean, you're no, you're filling in holes that they don't that they don't tell us about. But it makes sense. No, they don't say who yeah. wrote the book. No. Yeah, it's not the Bible. It is some ancient text that apparently there's only one copy of that exists with the Green Sludge. It's green, glowing, revolving, swirling, swirling yes. sludge yeah. in a uh, canister. I mean it. Kind of looks like contemporary Ghostbusters slime. It there does. you go. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Or the Secret of the Ooze and Ninja yes. Turtles, too. It does. It yeah. kind of looks like that. The big vial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which one came first? They all ripped off Prince of Darkness. <laughs> I mean... Okay. Ghostbusters was Is anybody ripping this, this movie right? off? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. They would have had to have seen it to Ooh, rip it off. Burn? So. Ouch. <laughs> Um, I'd never seen every. I didn't even know what this movie was what? about going well, see, into this night. That means you're not a John Carpenter completist. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not a completionist. No. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> well, you're, you're you're working on it very slowly. Yeah, we, we, yeah we're we'll, peeling yeah. away we'll, the layers. We'll ten years. Yeah. We'll There's a lot there. of movies out there, Colin. Yeah, yes, there are. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, anyway, the priest discovers that this thing is in the basement of a church in Los Angeles. The church. I'm, you're like, now wait a second. How can this thing have been kept? Secret by the Catholic Church for two thousand years, even though the carbon dating says it's older, mm-hmm. uh, is because the, um, the this is a former mi- Spanish mission. Yes. Okay, so it's been there for a while, not two thousand years, but right somehow the, this thing is transferred to the ownership of the church in Los Angeles. This is where this thing ends up, not in the mm-hmm. Middle East or anything. Had to right. cross the ocean right. to yeah. get here. 
and was Budget, buried. Colin. Right. Budget. Uh, right. Yeah, you, we you can't unearth be, this thing This under should the take dunes. place in the Middle East somewhere. <laughs> um, in a church yes, basement in L.A. This is the remake. We'll, we'll do this. The U.N., like the blue hat U.N. guys find okay. it. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like a Wishmaster movie. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, They'd uncover the gin like that. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how you do it. It's mm-hmm. got a, any kind of religion. You got to yeah, like, go back. Yeah, this should be in like gold. fucking Palestine or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's not. The Exorcist did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... So anyway, the uh, discovering what it is, the priest then says it's his mission to let the world know what it is. And in order to do that, he has to, because now we live in an age of enlightenment and nobody believes this stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. And the Catholic Church has also been feeding us bullshit for years, uh, basically saying that the devil is uh, the darker side of man. That's not actually a case because he's real. He lives in this tomb of or whatever canister glop. Yeah. And so, how do we? <laughs> There's a better title for this movie: Canister of Glop. glop. Yeah. So, how do we prove that it exists? So he's going to turn to a physicist. This is played by uh, Victor, Victor Wong, Wong. Mm-hmm. who Carpenter worked with in Big Trouble in Little China, mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. which we also covered on the Saturday Night Freak mm-hmm. Show as a Listener Choice Month. And yep. we've done yeah. Tremors, which would put Victor Wong. <gasps> On um, the wall. Yay! Congratulations, sir. There you that go. makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. I like That's that guy. Good. He deserves to be on I the like wall. I like that guy. Well, we actually, thanks to MF Med, put two other people from this really? movie on the Jeez. wall. Mustache? Well, they might be the hallway of fame. <laughs> mustache. mustache. That's just who he is. He's just I all mean, mustache. I don't remember his name. Mustache is our lead character. That's uh, Jameson Parker, right. who is famously on uh, one half of Simon and Simon. Nobody here remembers <laughs> Simon Simon with Ooh, Gerard no. McRaney and nope. Jameson Parker. We didn't have a mustache. No. They were detectives. Deleted uh, those files sounds, if I ever had them. Uh, nope. Sounds great, Colin. <laughs> uh, Jesse Lawrence Ferguson is in this movie. He oh, yeah. played Calder. He was also in Darkman. Yeah, he was, he was also in, Black. in Darkman. And he was also the Black Electroid Commander in the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, no. That's cool. racist. The, wow. but, uh, Which, they're the black electroids. <laughs> that was also a listener pick from last year. Yes, it was. Wow. Yes, it was, yeah. Wow. Okay. So and, the listeners uh, are putting people on the wall now, yeah. almost. Yeah. Well, uh, MF Mad also lets us know that Robert Grazemere is uh, on the hallway. Dad. He was Wyndham. The mullet wearing uh, character. Yeah, the be more, yeah, be more there was a lot of mullets. mullets. The this, was a, mullet? this was the Avengers of mullets. Yeah, this movie. Black mullet, the guy who had like Which two mullet? lines the, in this Or movie. the skullet. Blonde <laughs> mullet eaten by bugs. Okay. Uh, okay. Them, okay. The that was the power actors. mullet. Kaka. That yeah. was the power. Kaka, Kaka. right. The Kaka emphatic mullet. Po- Kaka. Yeah. Oh, I think, Sean, I think you stepped out of the room. You missed. Oh, yeah. He's like, you guys don't believe any of this stuff, do you? It's Kaka. It's Kaka. Yeah. And they're like, this movie's rated R. Like, why not just say shit? And he did say bullshit earlier and then he yeah. repeated it he said it twice yeah. it, cause Kaka. he did defeat it Kaka. Kaka he's just yeah, yeah he's just so <laughs> he just says Kaka God well, and then know. he got, and then he died yeah well yes yeah. but yeah. you'll be happy to know that he's also on the Saturday Gosh. Night Freak Show wa- or Hallway of Fame because he played the scruffy blonde man in <laughs> They Live I mean, we all remember accurate scruffy description. yeah that works yeah. yeah and he was an uncredited extra in Demolition Man what you're gonna have to go back what Okay, keep an eye out. Definitely yeah. the hallway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. So, uh, all right. So, so he probably per- listens to our show. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, if him you're and- out there, congratulations! Yeah. Your certificate is in the mail. Yeah, him and Larry Block. Let Definitely us know what your show. mullet status is. What does it look like right now? <laughs> right. Still going strong. Are we doing? Is it like a Reggie Bannister thing at this point? <laughs> yes, it's skullet. Got the full skullet. Yeah. <laughs> Who had the skullet in this? There was the that guy, guy that had a guy. skullet. Yeah, the one that got his neck snapped. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right, right, but there's a lady mullet in this movie too. There is too. a lady mullet. Our very bad Our main girl has a lady mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa Blount. Yeah. From An Officer and a Gentleman. Nobody mm-hmm. remembers that one either. <laughs> I okay. try not to. Um, <laughs> I mean, I remember it. I know it like, exists as a it. movie. Yeah. I remember well, of it. I, I had no place else to go. I mean, come on. <laughs> so we're throwing out all these cast members, but who are they and how do they... Re- how do they? Re- we just said that Professor Barak, the priest turns to Barak because he debated him, religion versus physics, mm. on the BBC. And mm-hmm. because of that relationship, the priest says, well, I'm going to turn to you. You're going to help me prove... But this is the Prince of Darkness. I yes. kind of love the idea of a priest and a physicist being like best friends. I love that idea. Right, because think of the conversations they yeah. can have. Like, I want that. I want on a movie of just them being like buddy cop friends. Yeah. Like, 
Well, was, even though that. they're on like uh, in their belief systems are That's ideologically why I opposed, but I want, they respect yeah. each other. It's yeah. like you're the expert in your field, and mm-hmm. I'm the expert in my field, and so we can at I least debate this as intelligent. I like people. it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, so who are these other cast members? Students, forty-year-old <laughs> looking students. Yeah, I, I mean, mean they're grad students. Yeah, so everyone, that's fair, in, but... everyone in the eighties looks older. But yeah, these are grad students, so they are older than just average college students. Yeah. But but at one point, it said to them like, "Oh, and you don't even have a degree yet." And I was like, "Wait, but if they're in a master's program, they at least have two I degrees." I think he meant like. <laughs> Like, they're not yeah. licensed physicists right, right. Yeah. yeah like you're yeah. not going to get a job as a physicist if all you have is a bachelor's degree i mean yeah yeah, yeah. you know but you have the knowledge yeah. you've been taking my classes yeah. right and he you basically can, says yeah. that later on it's like you don't have degrees but yeah you're yeah. all good physicists once there's in your own letters right. after your name then we can talk <laughs> you know and as a physicist we get um uh, there's uh expounding upon the idea of schrodinger's cat there yep. it is, yep. Um, we get to hear about uh, how uh, conventional reality breaks down on the subatomic level. Mm. Yep, yep. And we get to hear about tachyons, which are subatomic particles right. that move faster than light and would be appearing to move backwards in time if you observed them. Yeah. Which happens in this movie. Because John Carpenter was reading science Books right? or something at the like obviously there's something that happened like you know I mean I don't know a lot about like you know you know like he loves westerns mm-hmm. he loves basketball and video games so is he working something out in this well, clearly he has an interest I, I guess right. in, if you nothing know. else you don't always have to be working something out that's true but he does have an interest in this material mm-hmm. that he's just like all right science religion let's do something with it let's- yeah it's a it's a good place to start. Yeah. I think like with uh you know for a concept for a movie. Yeah. yeah. Like the the start of this movie, I was feeling it. And who would like, want I like where they're yeah. going with it. Who wouldn't want Donald Pleasance as like a priest against the devil? I want it. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like the greatest right? idea. It sounds like, yeah. It sounds, yeah. It sounds yeah. like I know. Yeah. All of this and the setup all through this like We're all long, like we want to watch that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All through this long fifteen minute credit sequence where we're getting all this information kind of doled out to us and the whole setup and the investigation because you're gonna move all these students into the church and mm-hmm. they are going to set up all their uh scientific equipment and they're going to study this mm-hmm. and but the, i don't think the 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 priest and the physicists don't tell the, the students what it is that they're studying right. right it's like you have to come to this you know because that's part of the double blind or whatever right mm-hmm. you're going to tell us what it is right you they know? don't want to be influenced if they know what it is yeah um and the subplot that's kicking in here is our uh, well, he's not lead character. There's, I don't know who the lead character is. I suppose I know it, it varies. There's uh at least three primary movers, and that's um Professor Barack, the priest, and mustache. and Brian, yeah. the mustached uh, <laughs> guy. So he uh, sees a pretty girl at school and tries to date her, and they meet cute, and so they're dating at the point that we move into the church. So it's a yeah. tender new romance. The mm-hmm. timeline in this movie is very confusing because mm-hmm. it seems like does it all happen very fast? Yeah, it seems like there's they they meet and start dating and then the apocalypse begins all in like 24 hours. Mm-hmm. It's very confusing. It'd be interesting if they did dating. like an what is dating? <laughs> like they they you know okay, like, hey, sorry. You want to get dinner? They're not like dating. Like there is in, no stop to go on a date. This all happens he within says, like a day. He says they get coffee, yep. then they get ah. dinner, and then they sleep together. Yeah. Oh, that's very There's true. at least three dates in there. They crammed three dates into one day. So yeah, I think that you're, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah, they did cram three dates yeah. into one day. There's a yeah. lot in there. Yeah, yeah. but I think this that's is good also it's a great day, it, <laughs> and it's not bad from a narrative perspective because you're setting up like the potential of like a relationship, and then the apocalypse happens. Right, it fucks mm-hmm. it all up. Yeah, plus it gives you stakes, you know, between two people and all that stuff. He doesn't want anything. Yeah, her. I mean, it sounds like it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I, get, I get the drive behind it. Yeah. yeah. Um, by saying Apocalypse, uh, just so the Carpenter fanboys are aware, we are also aware that this is the second installment in Carpenter's unofficial Apocalypse trilogy, which would constitute uh, The Thing, mm-hmm. uh, this, mm-hmm. and In the Mouth of Madness, uh, yep. uh, all movies this. that end with uh, no hope for humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, now that we've got all these people together in the church and they're studying, right? 
So it's all been really intriguing Sciencing. up to. So what do they do? What do they What do they find out about this? What are our, What do we know about the Prince of Darkness? They put code in a computer. They flip through books. Yeah, they the are, big old book has like different languages and yes. different equations. They are and deciphering they're the book, deciphering it, translating it. They are. They have, but they have differential equations that they're translating that, that have, weren't invented yeah. two thousand years ago. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's, Things it, that. Technically yeah. shouldn't be in there. Like the carbon dating or whatever suggests that this book was from 2,000 years ago, but these equations have not yet been invented. Yes. And they're x-raying the yeah. uh, container to see how it is um, locked. They discover it can only be opened from the inside. They're figuring out figure the figure secret out. of the ooze. Yes, basically. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> okay, I don't understand this. I'm just going to throw that out there. That... What don't you understand, Colin? Okay, so mm. the, the container... So that would mean... And I'm just working this out. Sure. Mm. That would mean that the entity, the mm -hmm. life form, the yes. organism, whatever that's inside this thing, mm -hmm. uh, was not sealed in there by somebody else. It has a... The lock opens from the inside. It was sealed by, in by itself, yeah. I mean, well, let's put it this way. It's Liquid Devil. Like, we don't know who locked this thing. Somebody right. could have... If we were able to get a liquid version of the devil in this container, I don't think there was somebody screwing the top on liquid You know what I mean? Liquid like, Devil sounds like a tequila. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, a sure bad it one. A really bad I'm one. sure it is. <laughs> yeah. That would but, fuck you up pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I don't think there were uh, uh, normal ways of closing this container up. I'm guessing a, a blessing yeah. okay. or a spell uh, put it, well, this thing down. Okay, at one point they, at one point they decipher that the... We'll say the devil. Um, the devil needs a being to uh, what host. Is, yeah, to host. That was what they said. They, yeah. they, 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 he needed a host in order to to uh, create his form. Which or since to, when? I mean, like, isn't the devil kind of can do whatever the fuck he wants? Like, I mean, this is what John own? Carpenter wants him to yeah. do. But this is, so, but we're saying they're trying to decipher it as like the devil that you know isn't. A, this is the actual thing. It's right. not the devil. It's yeah. the anti god. Well, that's not even true. Okay, that's so what, yeah, right. There's yeah. lots of suggests. Yeah, the the narrative Nothing says <laughs> that. Well, no, I got it, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure that it checks out, but mm -hmm. it says that the so the. the the devil was cast the, was cast out of heaven as water, right? And then entombed by his father, who imprisoned him on earth. Who's right? the father? Uh, okay, so his father, this is, uh, uh, um, Dr. Barak figures this out, because uh -huh. when they're talking about it and they're trying to understand this, he's like, well, if there is a universal mind that, that wills the subatomic particles of everything, that's God. Right. Yes. Every particle has its antiparticle. And that, so this is anti-God. But that would mean that this thing that they have is the son of the anti-God, not the anti-God itself. Okay. That is, this is the thing that the, the son is trying to bring other over from the mirror image of our Got world. Got it. But they also say that Jesus is an alien in this, so like... So Does that mean this is because, an alien as well? We're going Cthulhu on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So because uh, in, God, in literal words, God is an alien. So because <laughs> God had a son, Jesus, this is the son of the devil. Yep. The He's anti, the anti Jesus. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you're also right. It's they are going the path where it's not like the devil. You know, they are going more scientific with this because I mean, it's like a science experiment. It's uh, if the devil. I mean, I can't touch the devil right now, but I can touch this green sludge. You know like, what I mean? The Devil You Know would have been a better title for this movie. Uh, I think a lot of things would have been a better <laughs> title for this movie. You're right. But that sounds like some sort of, like, wet, like, southern drama thriller movie. <laughs> Wait, the right, Devil You like Know. wet southern yeah, drama. Yeah, like, like you know, like a real a sweaty, like, New Orleans, like, <laughs> drama thriller movie. Like, the Devil You Know. Devil yeah, today. that's what it sounds like. Yeah. There's just green yeah. like stuff yeah. dripping down. I'm like, woo! I would like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little bit of a sexy movie, but also like a thriller. Yeah. Now it, I want to watch that movie. It sounds like something yeah. Jillian Flynn would write, right? You yes! Know? Like, I'm on board. This yeah. is when we Google it, and you're like, you never knew how close you were to The Devil You Know. Um... Yeah. Okay. So I mean, like that—that—that that, that is basically the the cosmology of this, right? We're talking so, about yeah. aliens, gigantic cosmic forces that have somehow planted this wayward, uh, you know, anti-god light mm -hmm. on Earth. I don't for like saying aliens. Though. It's like celestial beings. I mean, I guess I don't know. But yeah, because yeah. that's the thing too. I, they hadn't got into like the science hadn't really got into cloning and all that stuff. Mm. 
mm-hmm. in by 1987. We were starting to hear a little bit about that stuff, but I'm surprised he didn't make the extra leap and which, you know, like Prometheus and all this stuff later did where, mm-hmm. it, you know, Jesus may have been in from an alien species, mm-hmm. but was like grown as a, as a human being mm-hmm. or some kind of combined DNA. Right. Carpenter goes more like, feels like 50 sci-fi where he's from a human like alien race yes. that comes to earth to warn everyone of the impending doom that this thing has been buried here somewhere and is coming back. Right. Okay. And so basically the story of the Bible is that part of it is essentially true. Uh, he's murdered after, you know, by, because people are coming to his cause. He's talking about these uh, cosmic things. And <laughs> it's like, I'm going to tell you guys about aliens and they're like, kill his ass. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? He speaks of. And so then the thing ends up in a church in Los Angeles in a swirling tub of green glop. Okay. Obviously. Um, so that's basically the first half of the movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. The second half of the movie is something, and then the shit starts to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a, a possession movie. It's a... A zombie invasion movie a little bit. Uh, it yeah. feels like... I know they're not. It feels like the devil is peeing on these people. Like when they get yeah, shot... The, if that's, when they get shot in the face with the liquid and everything, I'm just like, yeah. it feels like you're... Because, I don't, I don't yeah, why. it does because like their mouths are always open and they're always like looking up and tilted up. Like it seems like it's always there, coming down that on that them. that has I mean, anything are, to do with urine, but... There are a lot of money shots. It, remind, it reminded <laughs> me of when <laughs> Rawhead Rex pissed on that priest. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it felt like. That. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Actually, it's always coming from above that's down a, on right. them, you know, yeah. because we get a lot of shots of the the stuff gets out of the the casing by dripping upward. Yes. The whole ceiling turns to and water. this is the reverse thing, yeah. that we were talking about earlier. Like if you were to view it in real life, it would look like it was going in reverse. Well, that's what the liquid's doing. It's it's forming puddles on this. It is dripping to the ceiling because this is the mirror of how yes. like the physics actually work in mm-hmm. our world or whatever. Yes, um, which I kind of dig that. Yeah, because cool. yeah. yeah. it's keeping with the uh, the theme that we're going for yeah. here. It goes with everything they said so far. But once you start getting into, and this is, I guess, where the movie starts losing me, is, uh, yeah, it's that, like, once people start getting zapped by the thing, and then they become catatonic drones, and this is even explicitly... Some. Yeah. 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 Not so all what you want is rules. Yes. You want to know, you want a little more defined of what's well, happening. What's also, the point of having a bunch of scientists, nerds in a room if they're not going to establish what's happening and tell you the rules? That's what that character always does. And you got a whole room full of them and they can't put it together. The it's only true. thing they put together is like, is it demonic possession? And Barack, uh, you know, gives some kind of like, not quite. It's, <laughs> you know, because he's our, he is our quater mass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so he's like, not quite. It's, uh, I can't remember what his explanation of it was. But basically, by getting this water, the devil water, on the, in the, mm-hmm. in physically in them. The devil's mm-hmm. rain, sure. And yeah. it always, <laughs> it's transferred by like, uh, you know, like as we see in a lot of these science fiction movies, it always goes through the mouth. Usually it's black goo. Mm-hmm. This is just water. Mm-hmm. Would have been cooler if it was black goo. Uh, but they didn't have that apparently then. The X-Files hadn't come out, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so um, they just start behaving, uh, you know, so they're, I think he explains that there's like, you know, uh, ants uh, are all drones yeah. and they don't all know what the master plan is. And mm-hmm. so these people are basically our colleagues and the uh, the homeless folks outside have all mm-hmm. been turned into uh, drones. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, and the, in that regard, they're showing it both ways because they're drones on the scientific side as well purposefully because they're not told what they're working on like you said the higher being knows the master plan while the drones don't so victor right. is the higher being in the science the themes go like it may yeah. not be an adventurous movie but the themes are working there yeah interesting <laughs> <laughs> See, like, and this is stuff. I'm just I've, this is the second time I've watched this movie, so this mm. is stuff that I'm just coming to as well. Yeah, which may help with repeated viewing. Well, it is there. Um, yeah, it's there. That's what we can say. It's but there. I guess what I'm saying is that and I don't know how you guys feel. It's like when you get you know these catatonic people wandering around. Then there's shades of you know Night of the Living Dead. There's zombies. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, well, what is the motive of the big bad? And I guess we do get that explained to us, but it's like, so basically all of these uh, hive creatures uh, are there to keep everyone inside the church until the Great Awakening takes place. And they are killing some of them and then infecting them. And some of them do that thing that like 80s movies do that I don't like. 
which is uh, they type on the computer, I live, I live, I live, I live, over and over again. And then, you know, you will not be saved by the uh, Holy Ghost. You will not be saved by the God Plutonium. In fact, you will not be saved. (laughs) The God Plutonium. I like that. It's like, yeah, it's not like they're given a purpose. It's like they get shorted out. Kind of. For some of them. Again, there's not really rules as to how these people are supposed to act once they get sprayed. Yeah, because everybody's catatonic, save for two characters. Um, One guy, what happens to him? He laughs maniacally yeah, all the time. Yeah, he laughing. And sweating a yeah. lot. Very yes. sweaty. And Peter Jason, who I believe is on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame for uh, many John Carpenter appearances and uh, an angel, um, yes. <laughs> he cries. He cries. Yep. yep. So I don't that know. one makes the most sense to me. <laughs> yeah. But that, that implies that the person is aware that they've been overcome by something and are somehow fighting against it. Right. right. They're still there. But I th- well, I mean, not necessarily. I think it's just like since their bodies have been taken over, they have no control. So it's just like it's like a record that keeps skipping. You know what I mean? So it's like a reflex action. Yeah, mm-hmm. like because the- I did get the impression that like the the drones do uh, have um, like the um, the consciousness of the devil thing because. The one guy who uh, gets stabbed in the throat stabs his own throat. He's singing Amazing Grace as he comes up the stairs. But he tries to go for the mirror, which is like, this is the, he recognizes that the mirror is like the doorway to the other universe. But he he tries to approach it, but nothing happens. Yeah. And he's disappointed and he cries, you know, because it's like, it's not working. Right. But yes. I'm like, okay, if he's sharing the same mind as the devil thing. Yeah. Like, why can't he do it? Why can't he? Because the, I forgot her name as well, who also gets uh, shot in the face and infected, but then goes and lays down and transforms for the next half okay, hour. She's the chosen one. She's the mm-hmm. chosen one. But yeah. why is she the chosen one? Uh, she bumped into, she was the first person. She bumped into something and got a bruise. The bruise had a mark that yeah. looked like a mm-hmm. sign. That. Mm-hmm. But the movie doesn't explain why not saying why it's choosing yeah the movie, why why people act the way they do once they've been the movie doesn't unquote, explain possessed. why she was chosen it, yeah, she's just, just chosen choice. yeah by yeah. random uh you know a, a choice a chance yeah. or whatever yeah, i guess so but she ends up the uh the drones end up like spilling they bring the the canister up to her room while she's sleeping and dump the entire <laughs> contents of it this is cool because we see it on the ceiling and then just flooding into her face yeah like in uh, reverse photography, it's it's coming out, but it's going through her eyes and back into her mouth, and it's flooding her, which is pretty yeah. cool. There's some good shots with this. And her stomach swells up, and we're yes. like, oh, God, it's going to be the Antichrist uh, pregnancy right. movie. But no, she's just, uh, she's just a little gassy. Yeah, a little yeah. gassy she's and just bloated. really bloated. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and it moves around a little bit, and she keeps breathing, and... She gestates yep, yeah. for a while. Her skin changes. Um, she her, loses a bunch of that. Her skin is disgusting. It's disgusting. It gets a little... This gets it's, a little Freddy Krueger for my really taste. It's really like, It doesn't feel yeah, like... Especially from this era. Yeah, yeah, well, and especially you keep telling me everyone's having the same dream. Like, you gotta stop reminding me of better movies, you oh, know? Right, yeah, like, oh, everyone's yeah. having the same shared dream. She turns into Freddy Krueger in this third act with her what skin all burned off. What are they dreaming about? Uh, a weird like a fucking what did you describe metal it as music video man <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you said it was like really a nineties student film it yeah. is yeah yeah it looked like it could have come from habit I just did like a major rewatch of nine hundred two one zero yeah and this definitely looks like like some student films from nine hundred two one zero it's yeah. a little creepy though bad. it is creepy yeah. it's the entrance of the church but there's a dark figure backlit standing yeah. in the entrance yeah like, yeah it's yeah. like shot on video yeah but it's also transmitted from the year nineteen ninety nine. How yeah, you know, yeah. How? how? Because there's voices along with it. Every time they have the dream, there's like uh, a broken up. It sounds like a broken up radio connection. They say they're broadcasting. Yeah, we're yeah. broadcasting from the year one, one nine. nine nine nine. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they, there's other chatter and stuff like that, which we only hear when we. But it's amazing. Carpenter dream. was able to nail the aesthetic of 1999 <laughs> in 1987. Right. Like, <laughs> just like, do we have any VHS around? Yeah, that's well, crazy. Of, there's video used in like. Uh, filming off of video screens and they live yes. and stuff yes. like that also. Very true. But yeah, basically we're supposed to believe this is the secret that the Brotherhood of Sleep has kept is that everyone in proximity to this thing starts dreaming the same thing because they're actually people in 1999 are witnessing the birth of the anti-god or its Did emissary. Did that happen? Did I miss it? 
and they're sending. <laughs> Was that Y2K? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Could have been December 31st. Yeah. And they're sending this video transmission back in time through a tachyon encoded stream, yes. which we are receiving as neural impulses and as dreams. This is all crazy cool stuff. <laughs> it, it is. And it's. Again, watching it again, it's surprising how much all this fits into the conversations they were having earlier. Now, I guess it's not surprising they wrote the damn script to be this way, but it's nice to see it fit back into their conversations. I'm just very surprised that we didn't get a 1999 sequel. I know. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. what actually happens right. at the end right. of Prince of Darkness. And then the at the end. Because right. we, we get, don't know um, until the end, and then we hear them broadcasting back, and we're like, <gasps> Yeah. I would have ate that shit cool. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? End of Days. End of Days. End of Days, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, Close yeah, as we got. It is. It, it, really it was, is. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> it really was. Um, we should bring that. Up. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got to be like a Christmas movie or a New Year's movie or something like that. <laughs> it's still cold out. We can yeah. do it. Um, okay, so we've got now possessed people wandering around. There's one guy who, this is Wyndham, the, the uh, guy we were talking about before, who stands out in a courtyard after getting stabbed uh, to death. Power mullet. Well, power, power mullet guy. Yeah, yep. caca. Yeah, he ends up, <laughs> like hello, hello. I have a message for you, and like you're all gonna die or something. And then he turns into like bugs. There's a lot of bugs. He in explodes this movie. into bugs. Yeah, yeah his head he, flies right off. Then he slowly collapses, like the all the armor and bed knobs and broomsticks. Like, <laughs> yeah. As it does, all the bugs run out of him. Specific yes. reference. <laughs> is this because like the uh, the evil force has? Uh, well, I guess it is. It's like because it Creep Show came out and that was a popular movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like, we don't like bugs crawling on people, but it's the idea that it controls all like lower consciousness, right? Because all the worms, everything is like you said. It's there. They can feel it, and everything's being pulled towards this source. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can all feel it. So there's worms covering the walls. And bugs coming in, and all the homeless people are coming in. You know what I did like that I don't think that they really touched on, but there's also um, an eclipse happening. Yeah. Yeah. But that, it's like the sun below the, the half moon. I'm yes. like, isn't that, the, if you drew a line between that, isn't that, and a cro or cross, isn't that like the old-timey, like ancient, like symbol of the devil? The half moon and the circle with the... With the huh? well, was, yeah. That was... Was that the symbol on her arm? I was like, that's a symbol on her arm. It, was it? Well, yeah. it, it had the hook on it. The moon and the Yeah, moon. but maybe that is. I yeah. think, like, if you looked at it, I think I've seen that symbol before. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not up on my demonology. Your, your demonology. Your you gotta look up yeah. the ten keys of Solomon. Okay. I'm sure there's oh. supernatural episodes about all this. Yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> watch Supernatural. True. Yeah, I'm true, sure true, they true, go over it. So armed with the idea, because Donald Pleasance actually explains that this we're getting a tachyon transmission. For, well, no, he knows that it's a, it's a, a a dream from the future. Yes, and uh, and Barack is able to explain it. So now we're going to have to somehow find a way to fight the demonic thing. We haven't even talked about Dennis Dunn, who plays Walter, who's running through <laughs> this movie as doing neat. <laughs> as yeah, as we do as he's the, just. Just the one asshole. Relief. Comic relief. <laughs> one <laughs> asshole. He's just pissed that he's missing his weekend. That's he, all he we really hear is. about. It's just like, leave, dude. This character you can completely take out of this movie. It does not matter. What would you want? Uh, maybe that's why we haven't talked about him. It's yeah. like, because yeah. he, he doesn't contribute to the plot. No, at all. He is memorable because of he's a larger than life uh, personality, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. He stands out. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he's just uh, running contrary to everything that anybody's saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep. uh, And he has some funny moments mm -hmm. uh, yeah. while he's trapped in a closet. Um, Tells a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he's he the jokey guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's trapped in there while this thing is giving birth to itself, basically out. He's a full-on uh, meltdown. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying. Why he stands God, out. Why? <laughs> he does. I'm um, not expecting that. So, what is the goal of the? Uh, well, how how is this going to happen? How is uh, the uh, Satan's uh, kid gonna? Uh, right, what, what's so, his goal? So, once the son takes form, he wants to bring the father. Through, right? Yes. That's from his goal. The, the other abyss. side. Right. The, the mirror. Yeah, from the other side. Because they've been talking about mirror universes as well in this. So, and we see a little earlier, um, the chosen one, she sticks her fingers through a compact, a makeup <laughs> compact to try and reach yeah. in for the devil. But it's too small. Yeah. Luckily, in the next room, there's a giant mirror. Mm -hmm. Full-size mirror. Thank God. Yeah. 
I mean, for thanks, Satan. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks, Satan. You're right. Thanks, Satan. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder. Like, I know the effect of that is she's putting her uh, hands, her fingers into uh, a little puddle of mercury. Yeah, but isn't Ooh, that like that's, uh, that's hella poisonous. dangerous? Yeah, <laughs> that will kill yeah, you. Yeah, holy found shit. Out. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, How many that. times did she do that? Too. Uh, How many takes did she? It's like, we're only gonna do this your... once. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, not, yeah. Yeah. Probably shouldn't do that. No. no, it looks so cool because you can play with your. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very cool. It does look very cool. I always <laughs> want to play with it. But that, I guess, is the like centerpiece, like a moment where the thing uh, stands in front. Okay, so yeah, we were, we're talking about like her appearance is very Freddy Krueger. She's got a bunch of. So she's got what's that hairstyle called? Ponytail. Just ponytail <laughs> with yeah, front it's, bangs. It's a ponytail right? with bangs. Blonde. Ponytail with bangs, yeah. She's got scarred. Uh, flesh, mm -hmm. which is seen in bright light, which yeah. I, I think that's the problem with it, yeah. mm -hmm. because as the mirror activates, it's, it's all as, like it's front as lighting. If, it's as if like the top three layers of her skin were peeled off, and it's like all pussy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of pus, mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. red blood, and her eyes. And her eyes pop out of it all, which yeah. is cool. I think it doesn't help this movie that in Phantasm Two we saw like a similar kind of effect done better. I think mm -hmm. you know, yeah, coming, was, coming right off of something similar. The effect feels. I don't know, it feels cheap, feels kind yeah. of sloppy. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't, they didn't have a specific vision for it. They just said she needs to look like this, and this yeah. is kind of what we got. Mm -hmm. I got that, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it feels Well, like you said her eyes pop, and I'm, it's because she has her regular eyes yes. underneath this all makeup, mm -hmm. and it's like she needed contacts, you know, some type of demonic right. contacts or something. Right. something. They needed to do something with her eyes yeah. to sell this, because it looks almost comedic like unintentionally mm -hmm. funny right i thought you know it's she, like she makes her eyes really big yeah yes. it yeah. looks like something you'd see in dead alive yeah, you know that would be like a gag yeah, yeah. it doesn't sell it mm -hmm. uh, it's not like fearsome looking yeah it's not yeah. great it's yeah. yeah and especially considering like the devil sludge was like pouring into her eyes <laughs> yeah like she, her eyes should look different yeah, yeah she should yeah they should have like uh, the red the red light up eyes that um, Lewis Tully gets when, yeah. he, when he when he, <laughs> when he growls yeah. at the guy, something yeah. like that. Right. I wonder if they just didn't have enough effect, uh, enough money for opticals or maybe. something. Like maybe they were like, we can do this, we can black them out in post, maybe. or we can make them red in post. You know, blacking but, out is always a good way to go. Yeah. Like especially yeah. when the full eye is black, not just like the pupil and the iris, the full eye. That's always yeah. a good. Which, one. That's an effect you could have done back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But there but, weren't. Too many like like optical effects. Optical effects in yeah. this. There's there is, like one matte painting. I think of like right. the the church steeple and the moon behind it or whatever. But Everything else is just you know slow photography, upside down photography, reversed or you know sleight of hand with the mirror when she's reaching in. Mm. It's all lit up and everything. Speaking of sleight, yeah, I was of, hand. Say, speaking of, sleight of hand. <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, mustache is doing bad close up magic this whole. Oh my god! <laughs> <Random mustache. laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a character tricks. choice! Yeah. Just like I'm gonna have this this. He, He's got a deck of cards. He only plays with one at a time, and he doesn't really do anything. He just kind of flips he, he it just, between his fingers. Yeah, he bends a little yeah. bit and flips it back, and then in a cut, he makes it disappear. Yeah. 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 He is uh, a fraud. He's a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> David fraud. Copperfield would not Copperfield stand for wouldn't this. allow yeah. this. <laughs> well, then also, it's the idea that, like, the cheapness of it. They didn't have enough time to rehearse it or for him to, maybe he just didn't do his homework or something. Right. Like, right. No, actually, just show up. We'll do it and we'll cut it. You know, you're fine. Carpenter's okay with it because it's like, yeah, we got three million dollars and yeah, you know, I that's gotta, not the I gotta course, satisfy yeah. it. You know, I don't know. Um, but it does kind of feel like half assed. Yeah. Um, like there should have been a payoff to it and not in a cut. Well, there's also like in the end, so the yeah, the um, the the possessed woman trying to bring the anti god through. She reaches through a mirror, basically, it becomes liquid. She reaches through it, and we see this gigantic uh, hand yes. reaching up toward her hand from the other side, and you're basically in a pool, right? Mm -hmm. It's a swimming pool turned sideways, and it looks like Sean pointed out. It does. It looks like the giant hands that came up and grabbed uh, the giant mitts <laughs> that come up and grab Jason and pull him into hell. Yeah. In, yeah. in the final, uh, in, in uh, final Jason goes to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're huge and they're just kind of flat looking and just. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then, then it when she pulls the hand out into the real world, it is like a devil hand. Yes, it's red yeah. with black fingernails and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it looked to us like, and because this movie's cheap and it's also a universal movie, I'm like, they went and got Rob Bottin's. <laughs> hand from the tim curry makeup of legend yep. out of storage and just use it on a stick yep. yeah <laughs> and, yep um and then but this is when like 
you know, Donald Pleasance actually does contribute to the climax of this movie, right? His character does interact with it because he, well, he hacks off. He gets an axe. He gets an arm, yeah. And he hacks off an arm and then he hacks off her head, but she just regrows them. He's yes. like, oh, fuck. You know, there's nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. And uh, then it is up to. Mullet love interest. There's a uh, mustache left interest. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She has a mullet. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. The yeah. she's the mullet in that room. She's the mullet in She wears the mullet in this family. Yes, exactly. yeah. <laughs> she wears the relationship. Well, she takes it upon herself to save humanity she because does. there's horror taking place in the hallway. Yeah. There's horror taking pra- place everywhere. And so she kamikazes herself into the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Tackles that yeah. bitch and flings her into right the in. abyss. I dig it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then Donald Pleasant's. Fucking axes that mirror and yeah. shatters the mirror, and then well, that severs the she's link. Gone. Oh yeah, that's a very sad, creepy image. It is, and her like just floating, reaching. She's like floating away. Yep. Yeah, just reaching back up to it. Yeah, and the light like flashes, like poof, 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 and yeah. the power goes out. Like oh, she's trapped in the she darkness gone. forever. Mm-hmm. We're like oh, there was that promise of a love that was going to be eternal. And yeah. Oh no, I slept with her once. Yeah, he's very broken up. He really very, is. very yeah yeah. Very much so. Um, um, but she uh, saved the world. Yeah, she yeah. Just, well, 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 yeah. well, okay, okay. <laughs> Donald Pleasant saved the world. Just ask him. You see his face. <laughs> you see his smiley face. He's like, I did it. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. all me. I didn't I, do it with I anyone's help. the devil. Yes. I stopped it from happening. Like, you do remember that girl that just died, right? Right. You remember, remember like, her? all the stuff that happened before? We remember her? Helped. <laughs> remember that? Mm. But sure. You did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But thank God. Thank God we have uh, capped this, uh, you know, evil force and... And we we don't have anything to worry about the devil coming through in 1999. Or do we? Or do we? Did it okay. come through in 1999? Well, what happens at the end of this movie? Mustache, Mustache. has a dream. Mm-hmm. The How dream. How can he have a dream? The oh dream. my God, he has the dream. He has, he has the, the dream. dream. Yeah. Except. Instead of the black hooded figure, it's mullet girl. <laughs> mullet lady. <laughs> Reappearing. It's yes. lady mullet. It's lady in 1999. Mullet. Yeah, standing in that entrance yeah. to the church. Yep. And then he wakes for, up for the sequel that never counts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And he wakes up and gets scared because she's right there in the bed. Your yep. classic jump scare at the end. And then he yeah. actually wakes up because that was also a dream. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to the mirror. Now, I like this ending. I do like this ending. This is, I always love a cut to black okay. before something's <laughs> going to happen. I love when they do that. I do too. So it gets over time. Yeah. He, he's reaching up towards the mirror like, very slow. Is it, like, is it real? Yeah. Is it real? And he gets about half an inch away and then. Cut to black. Mm-hmm. That's it. Love it. Love a yeah. love good ending. ending like that. But that is like a carpenter ending, right? It's like leave him guessing. Yep. But mm-hmm. it, it's it's not offensive like some of the other uh, you know like twist endings that we've right. seen in movies. We got all the information we could get out yeah. of this movie it's like before the movie they has did it. A, yeah, it's like just basically like well you know yeah, yeah. like X Men Three: The Last Stand when. They all Michaela, get cured. it's the first thing that popped into my head. How did you know? <laughs> uh, when they all get cured, and then yes. like the last scene is Magneto like putting his hand out, and that chess piece moves a little bit, and then and cut it's like, the fuck you, Brian, right? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Brian. <Brad. laughs> yes. You made me sit through this bullshit movie, and you end it like that. Yes. Yeah, it's the spinning top. Yep. Yes, there was less bullshit. Spinning top movie. has some emotional weight to it, at least. That's true. It does. You know, and that's yes. what makes it work. Yeah. Is the emotional like investment top. you have in the spinning top in Inception? But yeah, this was good. Yeah, the black, love it. Is there? Mm-hmm. This gonna be a montage of cut to blacks. On YouTube, right? Yeah. This might be the greatest thing I ever yeah. watched. Yeah. <laughs> Just get that feeling every time. The best cut to blacks. Oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. Yeah. The Sopranos ending. And... Well. Yeah. Okay. Malignant almost did it. Almost. Yeah. Well, that had the Freddy Krueger ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I like those. I like yeah. what, well, but those are, you know, a hint of maybe, so, you know, like it still has a little bit of power. This one right. is like, well, what's going to happen? I don't think anything happens. I think he touches the mirror and nothing. Mm-hmm. Right? I agree. Because, yeah. But, I, but that's not as sexy. That's not as <laughs> sexy. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but again, and also we get um it's the Schrodinger's cat ending. Right. Don't, exactly. it, it's it, right on with things. Exactly. Like we don't know until it's uh, like oh Schrodinger's cat is relevant. Okay, oh, thank you. See? Thank you for that. So, yeah. I like that movie, observation. Genius? <laughs> this is a geniusly written movie. I mean, it's not not genius. <laughs> But oh. but what do we all think about that? I know. Would mm-hmm. would you recommend it to people? We'll find we'll out. Find out. Alan. Let's find <laughs> out. All right. Well, first of all, uh, stay tuned. We will go around the table and tell you uh, uh, if we would recommend it to you and what we thought of Prince of Darkness. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He stepped out of a mirror, God. Damn it. <laughs> Is this the reverse version of, of Igor? Have you ever seen that movie, As uh, As Above, So Below? No. I skipped it purposefully. Um, Is Below the reverse of Up Above? I mean, that, that's what the poster would tell you for that <laughs> Right, because isn't it so. in Paris? Yeah, yeah. it's the catacombs. Oh, yeah. right. I forgot about the catacombs. Yep. Yeah. yep. Interesting. Yep. Um, well, we should probably <laughs> tell people how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, about tonight's movie, Prince of Darkness, Nick Siebel writes in and he says this is such an underrated john carpenter film it's a slow burn but it's still a great film thanks again i'm two for two on oh. this year's recommends first oh. phantasm two now prince of darkness can i pull off the trifecta with congrats Frank show two amazing congrats what do you say yeah. He wants to know if he can pull off the trifecta with Creep Show 2. Is that oh, next week's movie? We'll, we'll, oh. we'll find out at the end of this we'll episode. Yeah. We'll find out. Right. Colin knows. Yeah. And he uh. loves it. Yeah. <laughs> he loves having this power. Yeah. Uh, I do. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, yes, top three carpenter for me. Sending okay. tachyon transmissions now for Freak Show approval. All right. Top yeah, three is a we'll, bold I'll statement. Yeah, I'll check on that in uh, the year 1999. Your mm -hmm. dream comes through. Uh, <laughs> I accept your tachyons. Well, Robin Linneman Silverberg says, Another one I was lucky to see at a sneak preview with John Carpenter in attendance. They Damn. marketed it as so terrifying that there were two nurses stationed at the back of the theater what? in case you had a heart attack or other health crisis. The movie did mess with your mind, and I think it is very underrated. Horrible marketing strategy That's for this movie. I don't remember. That might have been just the Expectations premiere. in a very wrong place. Yeah, who watches this and be like, we're going to need nurses? Mm -hmm. and somebody passes out from excitement. That's a gimmick. Well, that is going, absolutely John gimmick. Carpenter, and he yeah. makes scary movies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam Kaler says, I like stories where the creators explore different representations of ultimate evil, and what better way to do it than with a swirling batch of Ecto Cooler? Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. He says, uh, for me, evil that cannot be seen or easily conceptualized are way more scary. We rely on what we see or understand to control our fear. Having said that, I was worried someone was going to touch the ooze and become some sort of new mutant ninja. Yeah. yeah. Would have yeah. been cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, DJ Malka says, hells yes, this one flew under the radar for me for many years, but it is my third favorite John Carpenter film. Damn. Top this three again. This up there. Wow. He says, The Thing is first and Halloween his second. There you go. He says, it's a creepy slow burn with a fun survival third act. I admit I didn't fully get it the first time I watched it, but it drew me back for multiple watches later. And enjoy, guys, and cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, Michael Doyle says, it's a magnificent movie. Magnificent. There is Magnificent. love for this movie. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Phantasm 2. Travis Legler writes in and he says, I loved as Michaela says she's never seen the other movies because she got the perfect experience with the first. Yes. And Sean starts to ask, <laughs> why not go further into the series? My brain is thinking the same thing. Many originals are amazing, but some follow-ups are so much fun. How can you say no? I had fun with this one. It looks like I finally need to sit down and watch these movies. This is one series I haven't gotten to yet. Same. All right, there you go. I'm also not. Will I go further? I don't know. We'll see. Oh, but you're intrigued, we'll though. I can sense it. <laughs> I'll have to listen to the episode. <laughs> well, once you break the seal, you just have to. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. It's a, uh, get the disease. Yeah. <laughs> get the it's, it's, disease. It's, it's, it's like we, we, we spit green goo at you uh, now. We have to explore <laughs> these things. <laughs> Uh, Peter Gatt says, I watched this, the Phantasm 2, last night, and it's a one out of five stars for me. Oh. No wonder Holly wasn't on this podcast, or wasn't on this podcast on assignment, was code for, I don't want to sit through this shit. He says, trivia, in Australia, Phantasm was released under the title The Never Dead, so not to be confused with the softcore porn movie, Phantasm with an F, Phantasm. Yeah. Uh, but the sequels retain the phantasm with a PH name. Ironically, huh. both movies, silver balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, we're done here. It says wrap up and go home now. Uh, uh, Michael Whitaker. And, and one gold ball, which is real weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael Whitaker says, I kind of feel it's in, it, in its own way. This franchise 
was trying to create equally iconic imagery like the first Evil Dead, Evil Dead franchise. Did. Oh, for sure. Yes. It's, it's not first. a slam, but it is. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, Reggie is uh, they're trying to yep. get Ash, Ash Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, for our best and worst of 2021 episode, Simon Carter says it was a fun listen, and I have some movies to check out. I was of two minds about Last Night in Soho, but you guys sold the fuck out of that movie. <laughs> yeah. It's a good watch. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 three of us all mm-hmm. really yep. like I still got to watch I, it. I like that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Huddleston says... The heads! Uh, Cuts. He says, I want to I wanted to love Dune, but I just couldn't connect with it. It's a brilliant technical achievement. But sitting in the theater, I kept wishing I was watching a new Blade Runner instead. But I also love Enemy. That's the other Denny Villeneuve mm-hmm. movie that we said we didn't like. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what that says about me. Well, how do you feel about Prisoners? That's the that's the equal ground <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. That's the universal. That's a great movie, yeah. right? If you don't like Prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm yeah. also, but uh, Arrival's a one for me too. I'm just like, oh, see, I love Arrival, love it. But Dune, everyone should yeah. love Prisoners. Yeah, yeah. We also we love Dune, even <laughs> yeah. though that wasn't necessarily on our list. But we should be concerned though, because he got greenlit for another sci-fi movie, and I'm just like, don't let him be the sci-fi guy. He does great other movies too. Yeah, I you know, like a small movie from him. Yeah, after Dune too. Like Give me Dune too. Yeah. You mean Dune 2? Well, Dune, Dune 2. Dune, yeah. More Dune. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony uh, <laughs> Lavia says, I really enjoyed Wrath of Man. It really star- stayed with me for days after watching it. And DJ Dogman Fish says, dang it, Holly, get out of my head. Never. Ah. <laughs> Apparently your list was and into his list. his too. car. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a song, Holly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who sang that? I can hear it. <sighs> I know. I, I can know hear it too. Get out of my it. dreams and get, get into out of my, my dreams. Car. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it was from that Corey Feldman, Corey Hay movie. Dr- Dr- Drivers License to Drive. License to Drive. Why do we all know that? Because <laughs> we've all we're all it. up on Corey, our Corey's movies. There were, we all had that phase. We all, yeah. Yeah. Like, we all was, grew up with there that. There was a summer where we all watched all of Corey Feldman's movies. Yeah. You're goddamn right. Yeah. <laughs> so we all saw. Uh, May Hay, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the week before that, we watched the Star Wars Holiday Special. Woo! Indeed. And uh, <laughs> Brett Williams writes in, because, okay, so we were talking about, uh, he's going to talk about Nelvana. It's an animation company that did the Boba Fett sequence, gotcha. which, oh, okay. which introduced yeah. Boba Fett. Right. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, Nelvana followed up the 10-minute Holiday Special animated short by turning down work on Heavy Metal, that's the movie, uh, Heavy really? Metal, to do their own feature-length film, Rock and Rule, which was released in <laughs> 1983. Imagine Debbie Harry of Blondie teaming up with uh, Rockford Rockers, Robin Zander, Rick Nielsen, and Bunny Carlos to take on the villainous Mick Jagger with the voice of Lou Reed, who's summoning a demon to destroy the world while in concert. We have to watch this that now. Sounds fucking metal. Yeah, like, ironically, <laughs> I'm wearing my Blondie She's t-shirt blonde now. <laughs> <laughs> We but have I have to watch it. I, I really want to watch movie. that. For the cheap trick inclusion, yeah. we have to see it. Rock and roll. Yeah. I was Rock like seeking roll. out all those like quote unquote adult animated. Things. Oh yuck! I mean, I'm it was, sorry. It's PG, but you know, it was like there's still not... boobs in it. I'm sure and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. They have, like adult themes. They yeah. look like animated mice people. I don't know. There's like... boobs in Barbarella, and I think that's rated G. Or PG. That was a different yeah, time. Yeah, the, the yeah that's what I'm saying though. So they could definitely get away with it in an animated movie. I feel like. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, anyway, thank you all for writing in. We seriously do appreciate yeah, every yes, single thank you. Love uh, one of those. You. And I know we haven't read everything, but uh, we read everything that you said. Yes, yes, we are we seeing yeah. your top fives of the year. Mm-hmm. We are seeing all the stuff mm-hmm. you guys put in. Thank you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just can't have like a 30 minute milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so now we're going to go around the table. And we're going to tell you what we thought of Prince of Darkness, starting with Holly. <gasps> How did I know? I Fine. Knew. I can't, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Holly, uh, what did you think of Prince of Darkness? John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. John Carpenter's, yes. Um, so this was a first time watch for me. I'd always wanted to watch it, but I just never got to it. Um, I didn't know much about it other than Donald Pleasance played a priest. That was really my only knowledge of this movie. And I did know Alice Cooper was in it. Um, it's a slow burn for sure, but I actually really enjoyed this movie. I dug it. I think the whole vibe, like just what, like I said, within the first like 10 minutes, I was feeling the vibe of this movie. Um, I always appreciate, well, not always, but I usually appreciate a movie with like a, a religious side. Um, I think it's because of my background. Um, having been in that world, it fascinates me when there's a religious vibe in a movie. 
Um, but then when you bring like science and religion together, that's like my bread and butter because I love that that battle. <laughs> it makes me happy. So I love that premise. Um, and it was an interesting story. I, I really I, I liked the idea of it. I really wish it had been more like like you said, more Prince of Darkness, like more devil centered. I mean, I I wasn't expecting it to be like the sludgy son of Satan. Like yeah, it was just like a crazy yeah. ending to this would automatically like jump this movie up. Yeah, I think like if they had gone slower and saved it all for that ending and then just blown us away. Yeah, like, I would have dug that. I would have dug the hell out of that. That, but it it definitely lacks. It lacks a big reveal. It lacks. It lacks that that substance of like You're there's this whole Jesus. Alexa, <laughs> shut the fuck up, Alexa. Shut up. <laughs> um, you know the whole movie is like this. They're trying to build this tension towards the devil. There's no payoff for that, and that drives me crazy. Um, is that a comment on religion? They're trying to build up the devil. And there's hmm. no payoff to it. Is this what John Carpenter thinks? I don't know. I'm just. Is this entire thing a metaphor? Huh? <laughs> Are awesome. you onto something? I think so. <laughs> I'm always onto something. <laughs> He's playing 4D chess. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I was thinking about that because I was thinking like, well, there's so much we could delve into as far as looking at the allegories between like actual religion and actual um, like the history of the Bible and all stuff. Because the way they were saying like the book was written and rewritten and over and over, and I'm like, that's the fucking Bible. Like that's <laughs> it's a game of telephone. I was like, we could dive into this so deep, but we're not going to. We don't have that kind of time. But. I like that premise. I like where he was going with it. I just don't think it all wrapped up as neat as it could have. There, they, there was a lot of potential in this that I don't think it quite lived up to, but I did really enjoy it. Um, it is a slow burn, kind of disappointing, but it kept my attention. It kept me entertained. Um, some pretty, I mean, uh, some okay effects, but okay enough that it kept my interest. So I'm going to say I recommend John Copper's Prince of Darkness. I don't think it's going to be in my top three like some of our <laughs> listeners, yeah. but I did enjoy it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to say recommend Prince of Darkness. Alan, what did you think? Well, it's definitely a mixed bag because uh, I don't think it's like prime Carpenter, you know, for me, um, because I there's a lot of problems I have with it. I guess that's the thing. So I can, I can make complaints about uh, the pacing is slow because he relies a lot. Like Donald Pleasance is in this movie, but is almost like tired and just kind of there. He does he feel does, tired. Doesn't he doesn't yeah. do anything. Does he yell at all in this movie? Does he get worked up? No, I don't really? think so. I think um, there might be, a, there's a moment when he throws the ax, I think he yells. Yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of cutaways <laughs> to him. Uh, really doing nothing. Just kind of, you know, being afraid. I guess yes. that's basically what I got from him. He's afraid. And he's uh, awestruck, you know, uh, which, through a lot of which, it. Which, I mean, makes sense for a person. I know. Right. Yeah, but, but, then cast but for else. Donald Pleasance, that's I know, not it's, what it's, you want. Yeah. It's not Donald Pleasance being Donald Pleasance. He's playing the part of this priest. Yeah. And I, I, I guess, you know, it's like I, I love John Carpenter as a director, but I don't feel like this is in any way like a strong example of his work because I think, yeah, I think the idea of having, you know, this guy cries and this guy... Uh, you know, uh, laughs. Everybody else is catatonic unless whole... there's scenes cut, which I did get that feeling. Yeah. That, that sure. We came in in the middle of certain scenes where he mm -hmm. was deleting stuff. So it's possible there was an entire subplot or something that was, that was taken out that would have, you know, added some uh, context to this, but so it's possible you know, there's an editing problem. Possible. There's a direction problem. Possibly. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it, it feels in some ways, I guess my impression of it is like, it feels like a shorter movie that they padded out to like an hour and 37 minutes or whatever. Um, and so that makes it feel kind of slow. <laughs> this is where Alice Cooper came in. She's like, we need 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be because that around. whole thing, like I get, and, and that's the other thing too, like the over-reliance on like, Ooh, look, there's bugs and there's slimy yeah. things yeah. and these creepy homeless people are standing around doing stuff. And it's like, you're kind of rel you're relying on like, a, it's a cheapness. It feels like, you know, like you get a visceral reaction to seeing bugs, yes. you know, or seeing slimy things or whatever it is, you know, the homeless folks standing around in some ways reminded me of uh, there's actually a shot that he almost borrows right from Assault on Precinct 13. You know, they're all at the, the edge of the property to stand there yeah. all backlit. Mm. Um, 
but I'm like, I don't know that they serve anything other than to, you know, to be like, well, there's an external threat that, you yeah. know, it's a physical threat here. We but, can't leave the building. Yes. Yeah. But does the story really need that? You just need some other reason they can't leave the building. Or, uh, the and devil then, lock the doors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, demons, right? You open the doors and there's bricks there. You know, it's like, <laughs> bam, you know, you solved it. it makes more sense. Uh, um, should, the, should the Alive films have been an anthology? Yeah. Ah. Yes, all these stories would be better hey, served in an anthology. Yeah, a Shocker anthology version of Shocker would have been great. Right. Shocker? Yeah. All this. in one, yeah. 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 Hmm. yeah. yeah maybe. It should have been. Right? Mm -hmm. We fixed it. We, we fixed did it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go home. Yeah. Now you got to edit them down into 20 minute versions and yeah. put them all in one. And then um, do a, yeah, do a wraparound of some sort, you know. But. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, you know, I, I'm saying that those are the problems that I have with the movie. But, uh, there's a lot of like intellectual interest in this movie. Like yeah. this concept is really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, you know, and I think that's why I'm going to recommend it. It's like, it's an oddity. I mean, I guess it, it fits in. Like if you're watching, you know, uh, the Quatermass movies, like you watch, this as the fifth Quatermass movie almost. Yeah. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with that, I mean, you should go check out those Quatermass movies. You, you know, I, I would recommend this as well because it's, um, it's just it's uh it's unique even in I think Carpenter's filmography this kind of like uh interest in um you know I don't know it's like uh, yeah scientific uh, uh spiritualism or, or uh, scientific he an, supernatural yeah. he has an interest in something more yeah whether it's yeah. science or religious yeah. he this beyond whatever he has an interest Which, in that. I mean for people that that believe in science like those ha go hand in hand yeah. physics and religion well, that's what like, you were saying it was like you the know great the, the, question yeah. Yeah. yeah they go hand in hand but it didn't and that's the other thing too it doesn't feel like it's like a tug of war between um science and, and religion this that. is like them working together <laughs> yeah right to Which try and you know explain i appreciate but i think my problem is is they came together too quickly mm. <laughs> you know like i want a little like tug of war first and then they come to like they they come together to defeat the devil together, you know? Like, that yeah. would have been more interesting. I know, because Barack, uh, Barack yeah. doesn't really have anything to do with the climax. Right. Yeah, that's um, very true. Yeah. I forgot he was still like, yeah, alive. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He really yeah. doesn't factor into the ending. But, Damn. I mean, it's a cast of, uh, you know, it's an ensemble, so, you know, there's a bunch of people doing... And, who have been set up who are paying off. Yeah. Um, sorry, this is running long. What else was I going to say? <laughs> that... Um, yeah okay you, I, I don't know you I, like the conversation that uh because he believed in something else yeah beyond, but i i guess like it well yeah it, it was uh it was entertaining enough to me but it just feels like it's compromised by a budget like he couldn't yeah. go big enough and so this is the scaled down version of like uh something that has a concept that, that could be borne out by something bigger than this but mm -hmm. uh, i mean it's definitely interesting I definitely think you should watch it. Sorry that ran so long. <laughs> Kayla, what did you think of Prince of Darkness? Uh, we, so we talked about it when we were watching it, but we didn't mention it on air. Uh, how is Buck Flower not in this movie? Yeah. Seriously. A, yeah. You have an army of, of uh, homeless, homeless people, people in, a Carp in a one of them? Carpenter movie. Like, right. How did that happen? Shame. Like he had to have been busy. He had to have. Buck Flower was like, "I'm gonna need two million. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need two thirds of your whole budget for year. me." Yeah. yeah, but he was in They Live the next year. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. What was he doing this year? Right. Um. So that's a shame. But Definitely was, expected him to show up, but um, I, I honestly, I found this movie pretty dull. I, I had, I was, it was difficult for me to engage with this movie. Uh, it like a movie called Prince of Darkness needs to be much more gothic than this movie. This movie is far too scientific and modern in its approach to the devil. And that's just like, don't call the movie Prince of Darkness. You know, it's and don't call the movie Prince of Darkness and put Alice Cooper in it and completely stray away from any sort of gothic devil representation or any cool imagery like that. There's no cool gothic devil Satanist imagery in this For movie, movie at all. Prince of Darkness. Yeah, there's none. Absolutely none. So uh, this is not what I want in a movie called Prince of Darkness at all. I it, it, I found it to be boring. Donald Pleasance isn't yelling, isn't freaking out, isn't really even doing much of anything except wandering hallways. There is a uh, uh, like a five minute section where he is reading. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is yeah. just reading yeah. the Bible. Yeah, and I'm I feel like I'm not exaggerating when we saw him get out and walk to the front of that church like five times in the first twenty minutes. Why did that keep yeah. happening? And it felt like it was the same shot being used every time too. And I just this movie was really padding for time. It's not my favorite Carpenter, and it, if it's yours, 
that's fine. But I'm curious what you thought this movie was because it's so different than what the title would have you believe. How? Yeah, I. It's not for me. Don't care for it. Sean, what do you think? Um, I remember the first time I borrowed this from Colin, probably like two years ago, something like that, because I wanted to watch it. Um, and uh, I returned it to him, and he asked me, "So what'd you think?" And the first thing I said was, "Nothing happens in that movie," <laughs> and we had a pretty good laugh about yep. it. And it kind of feels like, um, you know, I, I still kind of have that feeling. But on second watch, I realized that I think this movie is more well written than I gave it uh, credit for the first time I saw it. Um, like Holly said, like Colin said, I love the uh, this potential, the conversation that they're having in this movie. I think is I think it's fascinating, and I think mm-hmm. they um, I think they got into some different areas they, they explored some stuff i wasn't expecting i mean then we failed on the name it shouldn't be called prince of darkness but how are you going to get people to come in and see a john carpenter movie you call that shit prince of darkness so um but i i like it is a slow movie um and it is not what i guess you would expect but um i enjoy this movie i'm seem to be enjoying it more as i watch it because you get more of the conversation and the themes you see how the themes play out in the movie which i didn't um grab the first time i watched it so I found it a little boring at that point. Watching it again, um, I liked it a lot more. Uh, it is, it's a slower one. It's not the greatest Carpenter movie, but it's a good movie. Like I'm, uh, I'm kind of surprised that I like it more after the second viewing. Um, I'm going to recommend it. I, I think it's very good. Um, yeah, I think you should watch it too. I think there's, it's not what you expect, but there's a lot in there that I think that you will like, even though there is a lot of just reading and talking but i like the conversations like except for walter all the other conversations are pretty good <laughs> and then you know and that cut to black ending there's some there's some good stuff in here um definitely hampered by a budget because we get you know uh just a, a devil hand but um but it's good enough i like it i'll watch it again so uh there it is i recommend it yeah all right so Here that's it Prince of Darkness on mm-hmm. Saturday Night Freak Show. We've kept that one off. I also, because I think I loaned it to you, thought we had done this before. Ah, oh, it turns yeah, out we yeah. hadn't. So thank you, listeners, for uh, putting this one on. Yeah, thank our you very radar. much. Yep. That was a good revisit. All right, so next week we're Uh-oh. watching Uh-oh. the number two most Uh-oh. recommended movie uh, or most voted for movie. Is it a sequel? No. Okay. 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 So we are watching Nicolas Cage in The Color Out of Space. Oh! Excited. All right. Haven't all right. seen it. Yeah. All right. All right. I knew there was a reason I don't watch movies. <laughs> yeah. They'll all come here. Hell yeah. All right. So that's, we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, join us for that one. That'll yeah. be next yeah. week. Mm-hmm. And uh, until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>